Arsenal have made a bid for Savage. He plays for Lazio. He's one of those midfielders that has been linked with the Premier League to so many teams, even Manchester United, way back when a manager who goes by the names of Jose Mourinho was a manager of Manchester United from 2016 until when Mourinho left. This player has been linked to a side which goes by the names of Manchester United and it came in as breaking news for him to be linked to Arsenal in there because we knew that Arsenal were really chasing in for Tillemans. Where has the Tillemans story went? We don't know, but I know it's really going to come in back because Jacobs Ben still believes that Tillemans is going to join the team which goes by the names of Arsenal in there for you. Then we have a story of police coming out and relating us that there is a player, North London, in his late 20s and he has been arrested. Secondly, they've gone ahead to assert that his arrest will really halt his participation in the Premier League and in Qatar. That is the World Cup. And people are really trying to allege that he's Thomas Partey. We are coming in there for you to narrate that. We are having Lisandro Martinez returning to Holland. And he is so much, so much pushing for a deal to join Arsenal or Manchester United. Then, the boy that was unveiled today, the lad, that is Gabriel Jesus, has really commented about this. You know his celebration? He celebrates like this. And he has really come out and really told us what it means. And then, secondly, he has even commented about why he always does that. And secondly, why they have the same celebration with Eddie Nketiah in there for you. So, thank you guys for watching. And this is Rokani Media Football for you. Smash the like button, comment and share. This is our second second last story of the day because two three hours from now we are really going to come back and do another story onto this channel in here for you which goes by names of rock and media football so smash the like button comment and share and if i told you you're watching us for the very first time endeavor to go into the lower right bottom corner smash the subscription button after smashing it hit the notification bell that will enable you get notified each and every time i upload a video onto this channel let's go eyes because you guys you are here for the news, nothing else. Now, today, the Premier League has really come out and told us that a Premier League international footballer has been arrested in North London on suspicion of rap. The player is in his late 20s, cannot be named for legal reasons, and is currently in custody being quizzed over an alleged attack last month. In there for you. So... That story has been really put out by the Telegraph in there for you. And it's rotating so much on Arsenal blogs because Arsenal supporters are really so much hurt over this. Police said the man was arrested at an address in Barnett. The player is internationally, is internationally known and is unclear whether he will now play in his club's pre-season fixture schedule. The player is also due to play at the World Cup in Qatar in November. All right. When you look at all that, Ghana's, the supporters of the Ghana's, that is the supporters of Arsenal, have really come out and said, this is Thomas Partey. Coming out and really attaching one's name to such an allegation, it's a case. It's a case. But we are just trying to bring you the news and who the people are thinking that player is. They are saying it's Thomas Partey in there for you, a North London player. You get in his late 20s in there for you. So the dots are being added and they're really and they're really equating to Thomas Partey. But you wait and see if he's Thomas Partey. It's really going to be a very big blow to Arsenal in there for you because Arsenal has just bought in exciting players and they are building the midfield on him. You get and you'll find certain Arsenal players saying, right, all right, if at all he's arrested, we'll hurry in and bring in Yuri Tillemans because he's cheap. And we are really trying to divert from Tillemans to go into Nicola Savage. But trust me, the midfield of Arsenal, even if Thomas Pate is there, they need Tillemans and Milekovic Savage. Those two players are needed at Arsenal. Imagine the midfield of Thomas Pate, Nicola Savage, Odegaard, or Thomas Pate, Yuri Tillemans, and Odegaard in that midfield three 
it can really be so much immense and very much much strong in there for you it's like adding steel more steel to your engine room because games of football are worn and lost in the midfield so doing that you're adding steel to your already made strong midfield in there for you because those two additions if i thought they come in at arsenal they are better than grant jaka they're better than el nini they're better than Lokonga. yet those are the ones that are really going to act as the backups at the side which goes by names of Arsenal. So we wait and see what is really going to happen at Arsenal. We are waiting for the police to come in and really letting us know and let us know who is this player they've really arrested. But they say they can't really let out his name. You remember even when the Mason Greenwood saga was around, police never really came out and really mentioned the name. They said an English international in his early 20s has been arrested put behind bars and he's going to be interrogated for sexual assault and how do they term it uh, as in beating the woman in there for you as in infringing on the rights of a woman i think that's how they framed it but they never really pointed out his name so don't expect the name of Thomas Partey to appear. And the only way that is going to clear to us that it's really Thomas Partey in this, Arsenal are traveling tomorrow. I think they are traveling to Germany. And on Friday, they are playing Nuremberg. If at all we don't see him in that squad of Arsenal and the team does not make any statement, whether he's injured or not, then it's going to be him. And if at all it's him, it's really going to be very much saddening because he has just crossed from Christianity to Islam because of the girlfriend that he loves. You get? And they got married recently. So, how does the girlfriend feel? <laughs> we are waiting to see what is really going to happen in the affair. But you are, you are proved guilty until when the law takes its course and the verdict is read by the magistrate. But right now, that player is innocent until proven guilty. That's what the UK rules or regulations read. You get? So we are here to wait. And even if it's Besuma was under the same case, but he was later relieved of those cases that they are fake and he's now a free man and he proved his innocence there for you now today gabriel jesus has been unveiled as an arsenal, an arsenal player shirt number nine he really talked a lot about arsenal he really said about how he admired the state of art of arsenal in there for you and he came out and really told us that he really loves Thierry Henry. He's one of those players he used to watch while he was young when he was playing for side which goes by the names of arsenal he said lots of things but after all that he was asked about his celebration you get and he spoke to Eddie Nketiah in there for you about the celebration that they really do because they all have the same celebration of phone ringing phone calling that's their celebration so Gabriel Jesus on if he's spoken to Eddie Nketiah about a joint goal celebration you get this is what we said not yet but for sure we will do it because you know I saw he I saw he celebrates like me, so I'm happy to celebrate like him as well. That is Gabriel Jesus. So in these preseason games, I know these two will find themselves at the pitch of flair at the same time. I know it's going to happen because Mikel Ateta is really a man who doesn't believe in playing with a single system. I know sometimes you'll go with the 442 i was really talking to kosi arsenal podcast you know him you watch him very well i told him that it looks like Mikelo's preferred system is a 442 why in the preseason of last summer when they are playing habanian rangers they played three teams in scotland arsenal played all those games with a 442 in ketia and um in ketia and abomiang we are leading the line and i'm really suspicious that you might see in one of those games arsenal is going to play in the preseason when you will see you will see these players 
um, you will see Gabio Jesus and Nketiah leading the line. If not, he will go with a 3-5-2. With a back line of three, Gabio Magales, William Saliba, and Ben White. Then, the wing backs, the left wing back will be Kian Tierney. The right wing back will be Tommy Yasu. Then, in the midfield three, he will be having Thomas Pate. He will be having Martin Odegaard and Fabio Vieira. Because in that system, you only need to be having a single pivot. And that single pivot is done well by a player in the names of Thomas Pate. Then, Fabio Vieira on the right of Thomas Pate and Odegaard playing on the left of Thomas Pate. Then, Gabriel Jesus and Edin Ketia will go onto the line. So, watch that. A 4-4-2, I will believe that a 4-4-2 or a 3-5-2 will come in. Or a modern diamond. You know a modern diamond? You can play with four midfielders and then you put up what we call two center forwards. And in those four, you can find Arsenal playing with Thomas Partey, Odegaard, Fabio Vieira, and, um, and Bukayo Saka. You get Bukayo Saka and Fabio Vieira, all Odegaard, sorry, Bukayo Saka and Odegaard can play on the wides on the wides of of the diamond thomas party will be sitting on the base of the diamond and fabio Vieira will be sitting on the tip of the diamond so all those systems are possible in there for you i decide which goes by names of arsenal so that has all been brought up by edin katia being on the same pitch with gabriel jesus while looking for goals the other the other the other um, the other scenario is when Mikela Teta takes off either Martinelli or Bukayo Saka and brings on and brings on Edin Ketia. Then Edin Ketia will lead the line and Gabriel Jesus will either switch to the left or right flank, provided Arsenal are really looking in for goals. Because I 100% believe when Arsenal will be looking in for goals, Gabriel Jesus won't be taken off the pitch. He will either look on these other players playing on these flanks or in the central midfield because next season we are going to be having five substitutions. I repeat, five substitutions are really going to be made in there for you. I decide which goes by names of the Premier League. So that is really a little snippet, but I'm really going to go on and really give you these systems of how Gabriel Jesus can line up with Edin Ketia in the same team. You've given me another homework. Let me jot it down in here for you. And I'm really going to do it. Gabriel Jesus. Jesus Gabriel. And Nketia. And Nketia. <coughs> same team. The different formats of how these two can line up. In the same lineup of Arsenal. And the team is 100% balanced. Smash the like button, guys, and do it because we are heading into the Lisandro Martinez story who is back in Holland. Let's see close to 1,000 likes on this video because I'm talking about big guys. I'm talking about Thomas Partey. I'm talking about the new signing who goes by the names of Gabriel, Gabriel, Gabriel Jesus. I'm talking about Milokovic Savic. I'm talking very many players, guys. Put respect to the names of the people I'm talking about. I'm talking about Edin Ketia, the new shirt number 14 of Arsenal, who banged in a hat trick in his first game, donning into that shirt, donning into that jersey 14 of Thierry Henry. In just 37 minutes, he had already banged in a hat trick. Will he do the same when we go to Newburgh? Sorry, I'm not a supporter of Arsenal. Will he do the same when Arsenal goes to Newburgh? We wait and see what is really going to come out in there as the result of wearing that shirt number. So smash the like button, guys, and subscribe to this channel, guys. The more you smash the like button, the more this video is going to be watched in there for you. That's another way of supporting me. You get? Thank you, guys. And let's really get this to the rolling level in there for you. We fly from London, where we've been, and then we are all down in Holland, Ajax, especially in there for you. Fabrizio Romano has come out and really confirmed that Lisandro Martinez is back in Holland today. He's been very clear with Ajax telling the club that he only wants to leave to try his first Premier League experience. Man United and Man United are pushing Aston Hag wants Lisandro as priority. 
Arsenal still there fighting. You've heard it well. Eric Ten Hag is really pursuing this, persuading this player to come to Arsenal. Edu, Ateta and the team are persuading this player to come to Arsenal in there for you. Sorry, Eric Ten Hag is convincing the player to come to Manchester United. Then Ateta and Edu are doing the same. All right, let's break this down. Arsenal made its third bid for Lisandro Martinez and it looks like they are like six million pounds apart from the money that a team which goes by the names of a team which goes by the names of Ajax want. Ajax finally have put United and Arsenal into a bidding war. United so far are having a better bid. You get their bid is much more higher than that of Arsenal by like 1.5 million pounds. And the add-ons that United are really offering are really doing better for Ajax. Ajax has not yet responded to the bid of Manchester United, but rejected that of Arsenal in there for you. But today, there is a meeting that has been shared with, between the team of Arsenal and Ajax, the board of Ajax. They really want to get to know and tell them the truth. Are you guys going to sell us the player? What is hinging, what is hinging this transfer from happening? That is a team which goes by names of Arsenal and its representatives. They are really going to go down in Ajax and talk and the results in there. We are really waiting to know the results in there for you. But the fact is that Lisandro Martinez has flown from Argentina and today morning he was in Ajax. Remember, all the players that, are, that we are playing the international friendlies for a side which goes by names of Ajax for their respective national teams were supposed to arrive on Wednesday as said by the manager. But Lisandro Martinez has flown early enough three days later Three days, three days earlier to go in and address his issue because in 2019, he sorry in December he renewed his he renewed his contract because they signed him in 20 in 2019 on a three-year contract. In 2021, he was left with just some months for his contract to end with Ajax. They renewed it and he put a clause and told them that when a team comes in from the Premier League and wants me, I'll go. And the reason as to why he put in that clause was simple. Arsenal were already suitors for this player. They had already wanted to sign this player. And he knew that he was going to Arsenal. And he never knew that Eric Ten Hag would leave Manchester United. Sorry, would leave Ajax for Manchester United. But as things stand, he's in a complicated state. But for him, he's okay with moving to Arsenal. He's okay to moving with Manchester United. It will depend on which team really meets the realistic valuation of Ajax for him. So it looks like Arsenal and Manchester United are in a bidding war. The highest bidder takes it all. I told people it's like an auction. That's how, that's how Leeds found itself earning times two the amount of money they're supposed to earn from a player who goes by the names of Rafinha. The agent of Rafinha Deco told Barcelona that this lad will go for 35 million euros. And that was way back in March. <laughs> you get. Coming to June late, Arsenal comes in, puts in 50 million pounds. Those are like 55 million euros. And then another team comes in, Chelsea, says we are giving you 60 million euros. <laughs> you see, that's how crazy the market can go. And it went crazy like that. So that's how a bidding war really benefits the owner of the player and even the player himself because he will get good negotiating personal terms. Arsenal will say we are giving you £100,000 a week. Maybe United will say we are giving you one hundred and twenty. You see, the player benefits in there for you, but it's tricky. I cannot really come here and tell you that United or Arsenal are the favorites to sign this player. You get it will depend on who really raises the money that Ajax wants. Ajax value this player at 43 million pounds. Arsenal have so far bidded that of 37 million pounds. Man United 38. You get so the difference is between six and seven million pounds. So we wait and see what really happens in there for you. Arsenal fans don't want to get this at the end news as another news this this week because they've already lost Rafinha and they thought that for the Rafinha's case, case with them, 
It was like in an arm's distance. You would even touch it. The deal was so near that you would even touch it. But it really turned against us not in there for you. And after breaking all the sweat to getting this deal done, Arsenal fans wouldn't like a Rafinha situation to happen for his son Martinez in there for you because they really like him a lot. He solves lots of solutions for Arsenal. He can play as a central defender. He can play as a central midfielder. He can play as a left back. The moment he comes in at Arsenal, that means Arsenal would go into bringing a left back to deputize a player who goes by the names of Kiantieni, who is an injury prone. You, I, I won't guarantee you that that lad won't get injured. You know that very well <coughs> in there for you. Then we go to the story of Milankovic Savic. 27 years old, he plays for Lazio. He can play as a central midfielder and as an attacking midfielder. Then Ma Masegero, that is from Italy, claims that Arsenal have submitted an offer for the 27-old Lazio Ek Saj Milakovic Savic, thought to be worth around 55 million euros. That is 47 million pounds. Arsenal are really having money. Arsenal are really spending. Arsenal are really spending. And when you hear of a bid of Milosevic Savic, it just lets you know that Arsenal are really into this plan. A moment. <coughs> Sorry about that. When you hear that Arsenal have really made a bid for Savic, don't say no. This story is from Italy. People like Dimazio from Italy have not yet really put... put Put authentication on it by posting about it, but we are waiting to see because this summer transfer window has been so much, so much onto those third and second tier journalists that we've not always believed in. Very many stories have been broken by these third tier journalists, and we've really believed in them and they've been ruled out right. So I cannot take this story for granted. And Arsenal are bidding in for Sage Milokovic Savic. That is Mesagero in there for you. And the Mirror have come out and said, Arsenal have identified Lazio midfielder Serge Milinkovic Savic as their latest transfer target after signing Gabriel Jesus. But first competition from Newcastle United. Lazio want £60 million. Pounds. And Arsenal have put up 47, but could sell for less than that. Milankovic Savic to Arsenal. All right. It's on, and it's one of those stories that are really going to be coming in here for you. Mail Sport 2. We'd hate to say that Arsenal in serious talks with Lazio to sign Serge Milankovic Savic. You've heard me right? We have. This is one of the biggest in Italy. 1.8 million followers, Gazeta Delle Sporto, they've come out and really told us that Lazio midfielder Milankovic Savic is a potential transfer target for the, North, for the North Londoners. And when you hear North Londoners, that is Arsenal in this window as he has just under 24 months remaining on his contract with the Serie A club. And he could reportedly cost up to 60 million pounds this summer. You guys, this is a deal for Arsenal. And I was talking to very many Arsenal fans. You know, I talk to very many people. I support Manchester United. That is written all over the wall. But there are things that you have to come there and recommend. However, much United have brought in Malaysia. Today, they've really agreed a verbal deal with Ericsson. The Jong is on the way. Lisandro Martinez might be making his way to Manchester United. Arsenal are really doing great. The great things with Arsenal is they are addressing the problems that failed them go into the Champions League last season. One, a centre forward. Arsenal is lucky, was lacking a centre forward who can get you 20 goals a season. Grab your Jesus is the answer. <laughs> Arsenal wanted another central attacking midfielder apart from Martin Odegaard. Fabio Vieira is the answer. Arsenal want to strengthen their midfield. 
they are targeting a player who goes Yuri Tiedemans, of which they argued personal terms way back last year. Now they have gone on for Serge Milenkovic Savage. What a player. <laughs> what a player. If I'm talking about the qualities of Milenkovic Savage, he has the strongest attribute that you would love any of your midfielders to have. That is a press resistant player. He's good on the ball. Even if there are four or five players, he can really beat them. He can really beat them and he really has a lot of strength. He's, he's a tower. He's a tower. He's tall. 1.9 meters tall. That is a man who goes by the names of Milokovic Savic. So I'm talking about a player who is here and has been here and has really done it season in, season out. That is Milokovic Savic. That means the area prowess of his is way above any doubt. He scores headers for fun. He scores from any area of the pitch. He has a hard shot on him. He can head you that ball. He is really talented. He has a quick foot. He's comfortable on the ball. He is everything. He's a complete player. And if Arsenal really get in Milokovic Savic, it's really going to be one of those signings that I recommend and say that Arsenal really have good scouts. And I've told you already that the way Arsenal sign their players, really, it lets me. It sends me up in joy and later in agony and jealousness because I don't support them. No one should tell you that however much I'm doing here, I'm here doing Arsenal content because this channel is diverse. I wouldn't like to see Arsenal winning. I wouldn't see Arsenal get back to where they are, where they were close to 20 years ago under Arsene Wenger faster than Manchester United. I would love my team to be doing what Arsenal is doing. When you look at the people Arsenal are really pointing on, they are really so much, so much identical. Detail. The attention they offer to the detail of the positions that really lucky their team is immense. Right now, this is the third player playing to the central midfield that is big linked to Arsenal. There is that Onana guy who plays for Lille, Tidman Zuri, and Milokovic Savic. The big question is, why is Arsenal going in for Milokovic Savic first and they are not going in for, for Tidman, who is cheaper? Could Arsenal be putting out these stories to pressurize Leicester City in there for you? And in these two stories, in these two players, this is Newcastle and Arsenal. They are linked. Remember, Tidemans is being linked to Newcastle. Milokovic Savage too is being linked to Newcastle. As you've seen that story from Dale May that even Newcastle are really wanting this player. You get? So, why is it that there is Newcastle and Arsenal you get, I'm adding dots. I'm really trying to figure out something. One of these deals might be fake. It might be fake. Why are they included into this? That's what I'm really asking myself. You get Newcastle, Arsenal, Newcastle, Arsenal. You get, is the person distributing this information to put Leicester or Lazio onto pressure the same? It might be. And I'm going to check out who is the agent of Milakovic Savage and who is the agent of Tillemans. Tomorrow, I'm going to come back with the answer. But if he really comes to Arsenal, it's really going to be a very good purchase and a very good deal that Arsenal would have done. Now, let me bring you those thoughts that Milakovic Savage registered in Serie A last season. It has been really brought to us by Sakwaka in there for you. He played 37 games. 744 passes into the final third. He was the first in Italy. He registered the most number of passes in the final third. 257 duels won. He was the third in the league. 102 aerial duels won. He was the sixth. 67 tackles made. 52 chances created. 45 take horns completed. 12 ball throughs. 11 goals, 11 assists in there for you. He played 37 games. 
he was involved in 22 goals, yet he was playing from deeper positions of the midfield. What a target for Arsenal. What a target for Arsenal. He's really great, and I wish Arsenal really gets them. If they get him, the better, because we United failed to get him under Jose Mourinho. Mourinho has, was an advocate for this player. He wanted him at Manchester United, but sadly, he didn't get him. Then, as I was really cross-checking the tweets about Milankovic Savic on Twitter, I found someone known as Adam Kays in there for you, and this is what he said. He said the following in there for you. He's a football content centered around Arsenal football in there for you. He said Milankovic Savic is an interesting link to Arsenal. Not the first time it's come up. At 27, he's a player in his prime whose goal scoring, leadership, and dynamism would elevate Arsenal's midfield. Waiting for a more credible source before I believe this. Even me, that's what I was telling you that I'm waiting for the likes of the Dimazios to come on this deal. But De Galazetto in their coming view is one of the credible sources from Italy and we are waiting to see whether they're really going to come out and really jump onto this. So guys, feel free to go into the comment section and tell me what you think about this deal of Milankovic Savic to us now. Martinez update. Gabriel Jesus hinting on him, celebrating a goal with the same celebration of the phone ringing with a player who goes by the names of Eddie Inketia. Then the other story is about a person or an international player who is a North Londoner being arrested for rape in there for you. Go in. Who do you think it is? People say it's Thomas Partey, but I don't really agree in there for you because it's an allegation that can cause damage to anyone's name. Rokan David is my name. Subscribe to this channel. We are on our road of 10K, please. I want by the end of this month to have reached 10,000 subscribers on this channel and with you and with God with us everything is possible. I'm out